Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Thanks for joining us. I want to start off this evening by showing you a video clip of an elder by the name of Garvard Goodplume. Garvard's from Pine Ridge, and he, um, I have this button on here, it says the Black Hills are not for sale. And he's been fighting people who are trying to take over the Black Hills with their chemicals, and there's the little the button right there, uh, for many, many years now. And he's been on the show before. We wanted to bring him on this year, but he got caught in a snowstorm. So we were able to have him videotaped at the uh, Mexica New Year's, but of course, there's a lot of drums going on in the background, a lot of people, a lot of festivities. So listen real closely so you can hear him. He has some very important words to share with you. Uh, my name is Garvin Goodplum, and I'm from the Tituan Nation, uh, originally called the Sioux Nation, the Great Sioux Nation, and I speak the Lakota language. I'm back here to the Machika New Year's. I've been here last year year before and I shared a lot of other things that was going on with uh, indigenous issues at the United Nations. I go with a delegate and we go under the group called Defenders of the Black Kills. I was here last year also um, giving information on Defenders of the Black Kills. We just returned from the United Nations on CERD committee on elimination and racial discrimination. We had to turn that way because the Declaration of Indigenous Peoples Rights was passed in September 13, 2007, and it's unbinding, unbinding uh, text, it's the chairman's text, how it was uh, uh, cross cut and cross cutting words, and uh, it, it changed a lot of the uh, articles that we needed for our help. While being in Geneva, the United States um, said they would not accept the Declaration of Indigenous People Rights because it interferes with uh, the U.S. laws. And most of this is what we're trying to push from the Tituan Treaty Council is our treaties, 1851-1868. abrogating the treaties, where the treaties were reaffirmed that anything, any treaties written before 71 is still legal and binding. After March 3rd, 1871, the acts of Congress became illegal because we never got the three-fourths male adult. So we, uh, we went to Geneva on the racial discrimination because of the uranium minings on the cold and the meth, meth, uh, meth beds that were being uh, drilled and uh, situ uh, the They drill into the aquifers to get uranium uh, which contaminates our aquifers. A lot of our aquifers are under the reservation which is causing a lot of sickness of like diabetes, cancer, thyroid, Types. And we took it before the state of South Dakota, the state of South Dakota denied it. We had a hearing. We had all our reports, we had everything, and yet the state was in denial. And they denied us of our rights and uh, really set us where we were telling the truth. <clears throat> and the uranium company won the case, according to them. And uh, so we had to go to step another step into the Racial Discrimination Committee at the UN. So we put our reports in and we sat with 26 uh, delegates, delegations of the uh, nations and the uh, United States was being questioned on a lot of issues where the uh, Western Shoshones of um, Nevada did put a report in about 2004 and uh, the UN uh, put a notice on uh, the 
United States to answer. It took up at least up to 2008 to answer and respond to um, the allegations. <clears throat> so while we were there, we sat in at all the meetings and saw what was going on. And we just, I just got a report. Uh, the seventh was the last day of the meeting, so I got a report on that, and I wanted to pass it out. I have it here with me, and I also have some information on seven ways how um, uranium radiation affects its chemicals. So I'd like to uh, share those with others that are here at this uh, uh, Machika New Year's. It's really good to be here at the New Year's, and see old friends, make new relatives, you know, and uh, I just uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about what happened over there and later on we'll probably share more things that's coming down so I really appreciate everything and I, I appreciate uh, being able to uh, give you a little uh, update. Thank you. And you can go to defendblackhills.org to learn more about what is happening there and Garvard's been just fighting year after year, day after day for the cause. But it was nice to see him at the Mexica New Year. There was, and Yakoa did a wonderful job on that video because you heard a lot of drums in the background. There was a lot of wind. It was very windy that day. It rained, but it was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. And with us today were our couple ladies who were at that ceremony. And I'd like you to introduce yourselves. My name is Temacuisquini Quinones. And uh, my name is Nasha Yaka Chavira. Welcome. And the name of your group? Yay Tekpat. And what does that mean? Um, Yay Tekpat is in the Nahuatl language. Mm -hmm. That is the language of um, uh, Mexico, the native language. And it, uh, the word Yay is the number three, and Tekpat is um, flint knife. And the reason we came up with, well, we didn't really come up with that name, it chose us. The day that we actually formed was the day of Yay Tekpat, and we decided to kind of stick with it because we thought it would somehow um, tell us what um, what our music journey would be and um, just that by itself it 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 taught the, the flint knife is supposed to be um, represent word um, or message right so we thought that that would reflect kind of what we we're trying to do um, the message that we're trying to give out with our music great and you both are dancers mm-hmm Yes, we're um, both part. We form part of Calpulito Naleke, uh, which is a, a group of uh, group of Aztec dancers. We do culture diffusion, organizing in ways of philosophy, um, our spiritual beliefs, our spiritual traditions. Uh, we bring uh, maestros, or teachers from Mexico. So we we are we've been uh, a group for over ten years as far as doing that type of work, uh, reconnecting to our roots, um, and it's been about three years now. Mm -hmm. But three years, yay, three. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it interesting because uh, three years ago we were um, we decided to go to an Indigenous Women's Conference in in Anaheim, California. Mm -hmm. So Demo, myself, and another another friend of ours from the Calpuli, from the mm -hmm. group, we went and uh, we did sweat and we did ceremony with these women and <laughs> we did a song that we had put together. Um, and I think just her and I knew that song because we I think I wrote it and we sang it a few times or something. Mm -hmm. And they, they were like amazed. We come out of the oh my God, do you guys have a CD? <laughs> out of a sweat lodge, right? Out of a sweat lodge, it's a spiritual place. And uh -huh. we're not talking about trying to sound in tune at all. We're just uh -huh. singing. <laughs> and girls come out like asking us like, oh my God, do you have a CD? And blah, blah. I'm like, what? We're just, uh, you guys sing and whatever. So the next <laughs> morning at the conference, um, the people putting the conference together had us do the opening ceremony of song. Oh, how so, nice. Uh, so it was really, after that, we kind of just really thought like, you know what, we should really try to, you know, we've come up with some, a little bit of music and we both really like to sing. We're dancing, we're dancers, uh -huh. we, we, we dance, we do the whole dancing thing and the feathers and the outfits, but uh, we both agreed that singing was a very important part of our spiritual ways and, and a way mm -hmm. for us to connect, maybe almost as deep or maybe even a little deeper than dancing, mm -hmm. at least for us. So Definitely. that's how it, you know, it came out was on our way back from that conference. It was a day three, Flint Knife, a day three, mm -hmm. Yay Tech, but 
we thought, you know what, let's let's start with that. Let's start with just today, Yaitek Bat, and see where, where we go. Where it takes us. Mm -hmm. And this is three years later then. Three years later. Mm -hmm. uh, a year, a year Tek Bat. Exactly. Kind of weird, huh? That? <laughs> so now you're going to sing us a song, and what are you going to sing us, and why? Um, this song, it's, I, I, it's the latest song that we worked on, and it, it started off as a poem by um, the famous Mexica poet, Nesalhualcoyot, and it's a love song. It's a nahuat, um, and mm. it's, it has a mm -hmm. very um, nice melody and, and tune, and we'll share that for you guys, and it's Thank a nahuat, you. so hopefully. Could you explain know. why we're doing a love song? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nausha <laughs> talked a little bit about um, the way we started. We started in Sweat Lodge. We mm -hmm. believe that a singing is very spiritual and it's very, it's a very strong medicinal tool and anybody can use it um, anywhere at any one time. And, um, you know, our, our teachers teach us, our Mshika teachers t teach us that um, when we're born, you know, energy enters through our head, through our um, our soft spot and as we live throughout our life it lives here in our in our gut you know when you're in love you know you feel it here in your stomach not really here you feel it right here mm -hmm. when you're scared or when you're nervous you feel it right here and um, if you've ever taken a singing lesson the first thing that your instructor will teach you um, will be to um, breathe and to learn how to um, sing from here they'll say don't sing from your throat don't sing from your head mm -hmm. sing from here and it's because that's where you have all of your emotion, all of your energy. Um, so I think love is one of the most beautiful um, feelings or emotions, and that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. We want to offer um, beautiful feelings, beautiful vibrations. So that's why we'll start with oh, this beautiful love song.
Now, you said that was a poem that was put to music? Yes. Now, did you write the music, or was it already to music? It was already to music. We actually found it um, on MySpace, a young woman by the name of Isha, mm -hmm. um, whose father is a Nawat professor, ah. as she wanted to sing a Nawat song, and she um, actually does Harocho music, so um, it's kind of like a blend of indigenous Veracruz music and mariachi music, mm -hmm. and she kind of put it to the melody of a very famous Harocho song, um, it's called um, La Bruja. But um, we decided we wanted to put it to drum since it was a Nahuatl song mm -hmm. and a very ancient, beautiful poem. Now, how do you mm -hmm. get most of your music? Because obviously there's not, a, well, are there a lot of songs that you can just learn or do you have to m write your own music? Well, uh, how do we get our music? There's a lot of music, a lot of songs, the traditional songs that are passed down mm -hmm. just by, through generations. A lot of the songs that we sing now are actually poems. So a lot of the things that you find or that you're singing, you've, you uh, come to find that they're actually poems. So there's different uh, famous poets, um, you know, indigenous poets mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, like Nessal Coyote, as we can mentioned, Nessal Coyote, one of the most, most famous poets. He was also an architect and a... Uh, a uh, great philosopher. Um, he has uh, lots of poems that were, they're still now, I mean, they're, they're saved and they're written, but now people sing them as songs. Yeah. So a song is a poem and a poem is a song. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting like that. So um, what we do now, we take some of those poems that aren't, aren't really used very much. Um, they're not songs that we sing in our sweat lodge or anything mm -hmm. like that. They're not so much uh, traditional songs. But we, we kind of use some of that and put a little bit of drum beat and change it up here and uh -huh. change it there and, you know, kind of make it something a little more than it started. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of interesting how that works. Um, we do, not only do we sing songs in Nahuatl, but also uh, Mishtek as well. Um, and a uh, lot of uh, sounds, you know, the, the ahs and the yas and the haas, you know. <laughs> so a lot of different mm -hmm. sounds we try to mix Just in there as giving well. life to whatever emotion it is that is being evoked, you know, while we're singing it. Mm -hmm. um, so the sounds, even though um, it, they might, might not be a word, they definitely do have a meaning. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's one of those uh, powerful tools that we can invite the audience to sing with us, mm -hmm. you know, without them even knowing the songs. Um, it's something that could be felt and really um, embraced by anybody. How often do you practice? Every single minute. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell? Together. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're actually really bad at practicing, and I think one of the reasons for that <laughs> is because of... Well, you're pretty good, so just perform. It's, you know, <laughs> just slide and perform. That's what we think, too. <laughs> no, the, we, I think, um, you know, the first song that Nausha and I, and I ever sang was a song, a prayer song that Nausha actually um, put together. And, um, you know, I sing every day in the car, in the shower, everywhere, and I do it really to... Um, just let, allow myself to embrace whatever it is that I'm feeling that day. Mm -hmm. So I think we practice all the time, every day, and a lot of our songs also come from our prayer songs, um, prayers that come to us, you know, while we're in front of our altar. And yeah, I think that, um, <clears throat> like you, like we mentioned earlier, we started off, um, you know, as young women looking for an identity, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when we first started in this path, um, and it's something you know we're born with as a as uh, people from indigenous land, but it seems like the older you get, the farther away and the farther away you grow from your traditions mm -hmm. and from your roots. And as young adults, we're trying to get back into these ways. And you know, the way that both Tema and I started to come back to our roots and who we really are looking for that identity was through Danza Azteca, you know, mm -hmm. was through Calpulito Naleque that we are part of. Um, and it brings us to that place of, you know, the drum, and the dancing and the meditation and the sweat lodge. But then from there is born something else. Like we had mentioned earlier, it's, mm -hmm. it's a song, it's a feeling, it's an emotion. And it, like I said a little bit, a little while ago, it takes you to an even, I don't wanna say higher place, but it takes you to on a different place that mm -hmm. you really can't even explain. I know Tema's been a professional singer for, for years and years. I don't know how long have you been for singer? Um. I wouldn't go so far as to say professional, but prior to doing um, 
dance azteca i was very involved into mariachi oh. so i did mariachi for about four years um i think our nahuat names now shayakat and temacuisquini also ha um say a lot about what do they mean well temacuisquini my name means um she who offers songs oh. so it's very <laughs> you know um i have a responsibility to my name and that really mm -hmm. um, i wanted to make sure that i embodied um the name that was um, given to me by the universe and um, singing, you know, I get to do that. But it's more than offering songs, it's, it's offering, um, you know, healing, it's offering joy, it's offering love, it's offering entertainment or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, but it's, um, I think the offering part is, is key. Now Shayakat is um, she with the four faces. Mm -hmm. You wanna let him yeah, know how? Yeah, my name is, um, means uh, four faces, right? So literally it's four, f four faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, that could mean a, a dozen different things. If you just think of the number four and you think of face and what those two different mm -hmm. things mean, um, it, it's the most basic four elements, four directions, you know, mm -hmm. for this and for that. There's a hundred different ways of looking at it. But um, I know that we, the reason or the, we, we do danza, right? We, s we dance in front of people and we play music and it captures an audience. You see it and you go, wow, look at that, those moves, look at their, their bodies, they're moving and they're twisting, and look at that, oh my God. And it, and, and it wakes up something in, mm -hmm. in the audience, like, whoa, what's going on? Is it real, is it not real? What, what, how do, they're trying to understand or explain how the, that feeling is. And singing is just one, another way for us to get out there, you know, to get out there and create a question in people's mind. Not only are they dancing and are they drumming, but they're speaking a different language. Mm -hmm. You know, where are they from? You know, what part of the continent are they from? I think from? it's a what great language? way to communicate with youth, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have five minutes left, so I need another song. You need one more song? Okay. Actually, oh, I, I could one song? go for several, <laughs> but no, I didn't say one, one right now. <laughs> okay. We've only done one. Okay, let's what do What are you going to sing? This is Yao <clears throat> Siwat, and in Nahuatl that means warrior woman. So we wanted to, um, I wanted to, to make something that was for the women, for us, you know, an empowerment song. So here it goes. Mm. <clears throat> website yes we do and it is I put it together myself uh -huh. I've seen it it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I'm very my impressed web page. <laughs> our web page our web page <laughs> <laughs> I because I put it together <laughs> but you're on there too <laughs> no it's actually a MySpace page we found I found we found that MySpace works really well mm -hmm. in promoting yourself so um, <laughs> that's as far as we've gotten is MySpace but it's 
www.myspace.com slash yaytekpad. It's up on the screen there. Mm -hmm. So where have you performed? Um, Native Voice TV. That's the most important. <laughs> the like, the um, last one before this was uh, the Mexica New Year. <laughs> the Mexica New Year. The Mexica New Year. We do a lot of events. Exactly. We do a lot of it. We, we perform at a lot for Calpulito Naleque. Um, we just came back from Los Angeles. Um, there is an organization down there, uh, Mujeres de Maíz, mm -hmm. Women of the Corn. And they did a theme. They do a theme every year. And this theme was... Uh, Somos Medicina, we are medicine. Mm -hmm. So um, we were invited to go out there and that was a great experience to be with the LA crowd. It was pretty mm. great. We also did a maize event here um, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago as well. The maize, local maize from San Jose, California. Um, we put together an immigration, um, I'm not sorry, immigration. Anti- Anti-war. Anti-war. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of those Super rallies. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we, um, we took a drum out there. And wow, we did some you play mm -hmm. beautiful music. I want to thank you for joining us at Native Voice TV. We'll see you again next Sunday, and you can play for a few more seconds. Okay. So go for it, quick.